heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend my life Mending broken people And welcome to 3ABN Today. Amen. I have my wonderful co-host. I, You all know, I always say this every time I'm in this seat and he's in that seat. <laughs> She's a great host. Oh. I'm just a co-host today. Thank you for allowing me to be here. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is fun. I like this part because I watch you at work. <clears throat> Yvonne's a natural. Um. But the reason that she does so well at what she does is because she loves to do what she does. Mm -hmm. and that's to tell people about Jesus Christ yes. and to interview folks. We have some special friends, special, we won't call them guests, they're just guests when they came, but they're sisters in the Lord. That's right. So we have some special sisters today. We do. And I think you're going to introduce the folk to uh, our family. I am. You know, these are, these are more than just guests. These are like family. I've known these women for, mm. since I was a teenager, which was quite a while ago. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And to have them here right. is such a blessing. And you're going to be blessed, too, when you find out what they're doing. So let me introduce them to you. First, we have Belinda Smith. And Belinda is the, I want to make sure I have your title right, founder and president of the ministry, which is wor Women Working with Women. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we have Perrette Mills. She's the vice president. And then we have Mom. Maxine right. Bethia, there you go. and she is the secretary treasurer. Mom looks beautiful today, doesn't she? Doesn't she? she does. She's beautiful inside and, and out. Me and you got million dollar smiles, so that tells wow. me wow. You, you got confidence in something. I think that's in oh, the yes. Lord, right? That's Amen. Right. I think because you can, you're radiating when you. I walked in this room. I saw you all smiling and happy, and yes. I said, "Okay, they love Jesus." Oh, they Amen. do. Yeah. And they've had such a, a journey. And, and before we even start with women working with women, I want us to hear about your personal journeys because I think the viewers need to know what brought you to this place. Have you wow. always been on fire for God? Absolutely not. I was um, in stage renal disease specialist in dialysis for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. And in that field, my goal was to train nurses and, and technicians how to dialyze patients. Mm. Um, during that time, I was making very good money. So, of course, born and raised um, in the church with okay. a wonderful family, uh, we tend to, you know, find our own way as we get older. And um, while in the field, I... Um, I did a lot of work for corporate America where I was working so much I wasn't even going to church. Mm. I was really making a name for myself in the field and I went as far as I could in that field as president of the Nephrology Association. Mm -hmm. At that point, there was no other level for me to do, so I decided then um, I wanted to do something else, but I also knew that I wasn't in the church mm -hmm. and my life wasn't the way it should be. and. Um, and if I was going to get that relationship I needed with the Lord, uh, I would have to probably change my course, mm, not okay. knowing that God knew that as well. <laughs> and um, during that time, my mother had gotten ill when I went to see her. And while I was there, she had passed out and I never saw her passed out before. Mm -hmm. And I was visiting, but um, I had a hard time getting that look out of my mind uh, when she was sick. And so when I went back to Mississippi, I couldn't rest and I knew then I would have to re just resign I can't stay here mm -hmm. I really need to go be there because what if nobody's there and sure. something happens mm -hmm. so that was a, a divine move mm -hmm. by God mm -hmm. Absolutely. I believe that mm -hmm. and when I got there and I moved to Gainesville and that's approximately now 16 years ago mm -hmm. um, okay. and uh, while being there is when mm -hmm. I got involved with uh, women's ministry. I've always been in giving workshops and conferences and, and speaking in public to thousands of people. That was my job, but not for Christ. 
Mm. That was the difference. Mm -hmm. I got involved with the Women's Ministry Organization and Southeastern Conference under the leadership of Nicole Brise, Elder Nicole Brise. Mm. And uh, under her leadership, I was able to travel to Africa and Curacao in different places to preach the gospel wow. of Jesus Great. Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to preach the gospel of end-stage renal disease. And here I am in Africa now in, in Benjaville preaching the gospel at a, at a three weeks crusade. Yes. Um, so that's where the turn changed in my life. And while I was in corporate America drinking and partying and, and um, doing all the things, Yvonne, you know, we should not do mm -hmm. in, 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 in that type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so coming back to, uh, to Florida was my saving grace turn. Mm -hmm. And so when I got back involved with women's ministry, I knew then after 12 years of being with Southeastern Conference with the women's ministry, um, the Lord gave me that vision to to do the same thing, but in the community. Mm -hmm. And so um, after uh, 12 years there at um, Southeastern Conference working with Nicole Brise, I, I developed an organization called Women Working With Women. And that's where the birth came. And, and the, here's the thing about um, our ministry, North American Division and General Conference, that the sermons and the PowerPoints are shared throughout the country in this ministry because those are the ones that we use to entertain the women in the community. Ah. So we give uh, conferences called um, Women Working with Women Conferences. And we gave one a couple of years ago and we got over 100 women signed up to come to this conference. Wonderful. But we were giving them the gospel of Jesus Christ through our uh, North American Division uh, PowerPoints on women's ministry, on abuse, mm -hmm. end it now, mm -hmm. all those things. We give all of that to the community. We don't house it. It's not ours to house. Okay. So, so, so you bring the community in, absolutely. Uh, women in, and then you're showing them um, the absolutely. evangelistic types of tools. It's an evangelistic thrust that we're using in the community. We're preaching the gospel with our material that allows the women to learn how to live uh, in Christ and how to uh, deal with abuse, how to deal with uh, incarceration, how to deal with single parenting. We have all that stuff. We have all the material. All we're doing is taking it from um, the church and taking it outside to the community so that we can share it with those women and they have no idea. That's wonderful. While we invite the women of the church to join us mm -hmm. in that same effort so we can grow that ministry in the community and in the church because we want to teach women in the church how to do what we're doing mm. to grow our communities even further for the church because the ultimate goal is whether we're in the church or not, it's a women's ministry. Yes. And we want to make sure people have a part in that ministry. Yes. yes. And, and I, I, I really want to get more into women working with women, but I, want, I still want to hear more of your journey yes. first. And Perrette, I know you have a testimony too. Tell us about your testimony. Well, I have quite a few testimonies, but I'm going to try to <laughs> tell you this particular one because it started when we were young with this lady here. Mm. Ever since I can remember, my mother's always taken in people um, mm. from the street, from mm. uh, so many places, particularly um, doing community service with those people. What's exciting to me about that is that I didn't realize she was planting a seed. Mm. So whether we were, you know, feeding people mm. um, or taking people in our home or visiting prisons every weekend, because that just started with her 50 plus years ago where we were, prison ministry was in our spirit. Every mm -hmm. Sabbath, we had to go to the nursing home. We had to go visit the prisons. We, oh, would, yeah. we would not stay at home um, Good job, children. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> so Rain up the child. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So we, we yeah, learned by we... example, but didn't realize what was really going on because we weren't crazy about the idea, but it had become who we were. Okay. And of course, in turn, I ended up doing that with my own children. So as I moved forward in my own personal life, um, I went into teaching, and when whatever city I was in, and, it, and I've been in nine conferences mm. around the nation, mm -hmm. so in every city there was some type of food-giving program that we, I was a part of, and then I started my own for the school because, you know, in our schools we don't have just, mm -hmm. um, you know, Seventh-day Adventist sure. children, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of people who came to our schools they couldn't afford it who won scholarships, okay. and they needed the help. So when I saw poverty or if I saw a need, and even people who were middle class, mm -hmm. they didn't always have enough 
to to make ends meet in the way to make them comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we started in our schools with foods, at different schools. Mm -hmm. So now here I am at a point in my life where not only are my children doing the same thing and love to do the same thing, but Linda tells me about all that she's doing with women's ministries for her conference. The first 12 years she worked, I tried to be a part of that with her. I'm a balloon artist. Oh, okay. So my nose got in the door <laughs> as I create balloon art that wows. And so she had me come in and mm -hmm. make sure that her conferences had that, that, that appeal. Okay. And of course, the more I saw her involved, she knew that with my experience in schools, I talked to a lot of parents. I've always, you know, had parenting seminars just back to back all the time. And she wanted to put that piece in right. her presentation. You know, when she did conferences, we have all kinds of workshops, but she wanted a parenting workshop. Um, because of that situation, I saw her grow and grow and grow and just stuck with her. So it was a natural transition for me to get involved. But remember the evangelistic thrust to the whole part of conferencing was that I'm not going to be mentoring to the women in the church. The conferences are being reached out to the women in the community. So when we do our conferences, we go on radio, we go in the paper, and we promote it through the local churches. And the okay. people that come to the women conferences are from all other churches. Mm. And they're looking and they're hearing and they're watching that every presenter um, is someone that we know that use our material that shares that, whether it's on End It Now Abuse or whether it's on um, how to be a good parent. We, we use our material in an evangelistic thrust to give to the community and they eat it up. They want mm. the copies. They want mm. the, can you give me, can you give me a copy of that sermon? Can I have it? And all the speakers are from our conference that I know because that's who God put in my life were those women. And so we've had just Judith Hawkins. We've had many women help us speak at our conferences. And, um, mm. and in doing that, we're able to tell the women in the community, you know, that you are more than just a conqueror. Mm. You might be addicted right now to him or to a drug, but the bottom line is when you get done this weekend at this conference, you're gonna realize how much God loves you and how much you are more than what you believe you are. And, and, that, and when I saw that, when I saw that growth, when I saw that thrust, and she told me what she wanted to do when she left working with the conference, I kind of, it was just a natural transition for me to be a part. And uh, I, I just love working with, with the program, I really do. That's and again, it's the conference. It's, it's the women ministries that we have throughout the conferences that have that equipment to empower me to empower others. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important to get involved with women's ministry as a woman if you're in a church, okay. because it is critical to get this material and take it to the community. Mm -hmm. That's why we're there. We're sitting there every year. We're at conferences. We're being empowered. We're being filled. And now we have to let that cup run over out in the community. Yeah. And that's what I'm illustrating right now um, in our community. And I'm hoping uh, people will follow that same trend, not wait to be put in office, just do the work. Yes, um, yes. It's not a women's ministries club. It's a women right. in ministry. <laughs> yes. Women in ministry. It, women in ministry. So, so Sister Max, oh, did you want to say Well, something? I was just, before you move on, I wanted to <laughs> ask her a question right yes. before we came on the air. I heard you two talking and you were talking about you've known her I'm going to say since you were a little girl almost, right? Yes. You know, so, so, so tell, you, tell us a little bit about oh, this relationship. Danny, I am so <laughs> glad you said that because really that's where this plant, seed was planted in my heart. Mm. I love, 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 love music. Mm -hmm. And I love ministry. I call it the M&Ms. <laughs> they go together. Good. And right. um, my love for music started in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. And I, my girlfriend and I would follow Miss Yvonne Hodge at that time. <laughs> Everywhere she went, when we heard she was singing, it was like a celebrity. Because her voice, here's, here's, the, here's the difference. That music grew ministry loving in my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, just, her voice was so crystal clear with no vibrato. Mm -hmm. I never heard that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was like water. It's like listening to fresh water because it was new. And I must have been all of 10 and 11. 
when I first realized how powerful that wow, was for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, <laughs> uh, no, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> but it's exciting, though, to know that because of that seed and following her, whenever we heard her name, mm -hmm. we wanted to get involved. I'm not talking about now 10 and 11. Yeah. I'm talking about 18. I'm talking about 24. I'm talking about 30. Yeah. All my life, somewhere, I would be able to find and spot that music in my life. And it kept drawing me back to ministry. Praise so the, the teaching Lord. ministry, ministry mm -hmm. the music ministry, I'm a choir director to this day. She didn't know that. Ah. I'm a children's choir director. Yeah. Um, all of that started with a love that I had for people who I call the glue that keeps us in the church. Okay. So yeah. when you hear Yvonne, there's a pull. You know, when you hear about her sister, you hear about any family member that was surrounding Bethel Church at that time. Mm -hmm. you, you, there's a pull. So yeah. this thing of, of ministry, and I say this to all parents all the time, we have to create positive spiritual memories mm -hmm. for children mm -hmm. at every age. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because truly, just as Yvonne became my glue, that becomes their glue to staying in the church. Mm -hmm. So now when I talk about women and families in this ministry, mm -hmm. I'm talking about saving souls. That's all I'm talking That's about. That's all about. Praise the Lord. You know, just a, a few nights ago, uh, I went to New York with her. We went to New York. She was invited to a Roberta Flack that she used to sing with um, yes. on the road for wow. some time. Wow. And Glad she was invited to her birthday party, so of course I tag along. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was so amazed at, because I didn't know this part of her life, I've knew her a number of years, mm -hmm. but the professional singers, some of the folk oh, you may goodness. call icons that were wow. there, all came up to oh. her. Oh, I, I knew that. I knew they that. They came up that. to her and was saying, you know, we've studied you, we, we, oh, we've man. listened to you, but what they told me, that she was such an influence on us for the mm -hmm. positive. She was always what you see today. Mm -hmm. You know, she was always good natured, she was yes. helpful. Yes. She she we knew there was something Amen. special about her. Yeah. And so we actually saw some of the younger singers, it was forties, we call that younger now. Forties yeah. <laughs> and ages who are professional singers who hadn't really known her. There she's enough older. Mm -hmm. They hadn't seen her face, but when they introduced her to sing and she went to Roberta and then Roberta said, Would you sing for me? Oh my and they goodness. said, Yvonne Lewis the whole, you could hear the whole crowd was like, <gasps> so afterwards, these younger <laughs> folks said, man, we, we, we've studied you, we've listened to you, we, we, you know, all of these years, and so you've been a great mentor for us, and they Ooh, called it, it the golden mm -hmm. era of yeah. their, their music, but I said all that yeah. to say her spirit, even though she left the church for a while, her spirit, she knew God was drawing her oh, back. Yeah. Amen. That yes. same spirit that, yes. that she has now was within her that same, but she had to really find her way mm -hmm. right back to where she is today. Oh, Amen. Amen. Well, because of her spirit and because of her journey, I didn't really leave the church. I always yeah. had music. Mm -hmm. okay. I always had music and the love that I had started with this young lady. Wow. Oh, praise Great. the Lord. That makes Wonderful. me want to cry. <laughs> praise the Lord because yeah. the Lord has, it's so obvious that he's had his hand on all of us. Mm -hmm. And he's yes. just brought us all such a mighty long way. Mm -hmm. And so, even though we've all come from great families, we still have a journey that we have to take on our own. That's right. And even when I left the church and I partied and drank and smoked and I did all of those things. Yeah, I did. I know you're watching, but I did. <laughs> and, but it all had to be a part of that journey because God only deals with our choices, mm. but he also knows our heart. And you remember, no matter what Peter said, Lord, I will not deny you, God knew his heart and allowed okay. him to deny him. Mm -hmm. But he said afterwards, I allowed him to do that because I knew his heart. Okay. What does that say? So yeah. the, that we, we go through these journeys because God knows us. He really knows us. Yeah. Yeah. And he knows uh, uh, how we feel. Mm -hmm. And that's why this ministry, I have such a passion for women's ministry. I had a passion uh, when, I, when I was in the conference. I have a passion now as, a, as an entrepreneur and a business owner. It is critical to, to, to help save uh, the women in the community more than ever mm -hmm. because I know where I was. Mm. Okay. And I know where I'm not. That's mm -hmm. good. And, and even though I was there, you would think I would have been lost. But no, he wasn't done with us yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. So right. that's what we're saying to the women in the community. And even to the women that we go see in the jail every Sunday, every week. She's been going, my mother has been going to jail for over 50, 
three years. Oh. Oh. Every 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 week, mm -hmm. starting in New York at Sing Sing Sing. Been going to jail of her own accord every week. Yes. Of her, of her own <laughs> yeah. Accord. yeah. Right. Yes. Glad you clarify. Yes, absolutely. Of her own accord. <laughs> and even with this going now, it, the women there, even as as early as of last week, the women were very ashamed of what they what they were in there for and very humiliated and when they come in the room they're they're just not they're despondent mm -hmm. but then when we say hey praise god you're here today look at the day that god has made just for you you could have been in your cell but you came up here all right to hear the word good so god still is prickling your heart That's and good. so you have to remember you know my husband was in the same jail Mm -hmm. and, and, and I wasn't in this jail, but I was sure I've crossed a path or something that you've done because they have to realize they can relate to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when they realize that they can relate to you, then you, you have a connection there that they yeah. won't have with anyone else. And I think that's why Women Work with Women works in the jail in the transition that they come out and they sign up for our hours to get their hours done with us. So Wonderful. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Sister Maxine, what do you think when you hear your girls talking about mm -hmm. ministry and the seeds that you've planted in them? Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you hear them talk? I just praise God because I know if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be here today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell yes. us about your journey. Hmm? Tell mm -hmm. us about your journey. Yeah, Mom, tell well, about your journey. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you all of it. I'll tell you some of it, but I do know that. Well, I was married before my husband's death. I uh, was going to church, but I was serving uh, my community and my family and my church family, doing what I'm supposed to do. But when my husband passed, and I got married to Jesus. Mm. Mm. Everything changed. Wow. And when he passed, God asked God, what am I supposed to do? I, I, I'm up in New York. I don't have all my education. I, I don't have a job. I said, how am I supposed to raise these children? And the boy said, put them in church school. Okay. Mm. Me and God had a talk. I said, oh, Lord, how can I put them in church school? <laughs> I have no money. He said, put them in church school. I went to church that night and talked with the pastor. He said the same thing. The next day, Brett came home from first day in junior high school. And she said, Mom, I'm not going back to that school. Mm. And I just talked with the pastor. It's not about this church school thing. Now, you're not going back to the public school? Mm. Mm -hmm. She said, no, they want me to bring my lunch and some money tomorrow, and I, 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 it's going to beat me up. Mm. I said, baby, don't worry. You don't have to go. Mm. So when all my children came in from school that evening, we had a talk. And I told them, tomorrow we're going to go find a church school. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of excited. But I didn't know where I was going to go. But no money. <laughs> Just a prayer <laughs> and a raggedy car. <laughs> <laughs> that night we prayed, put my babies to bed. Early the next morning we get up, we getting ready to go somewhere to school, don't know where. Got in that car and start driving around Brooklyn, New York. And the Lord stopped us in front of the school called Brooklyn Temple, mm. Mm. 3 Lewis Avenue. I prayed with my babies in the car and got them, walked into the school, and the Lord had everything already planned. Mm. Walked into the office, Mr. Severa says, oh, so good to have you here. Are these all your children? I said, yes, all four. He said, well, come into the office. We go into the office and sit down and talk and talk. And then he says, we are just going to do what we can to help you keep these babies here. We can need you here. Do you know, he said, I'm going to figure out how much it's going to cost, though. We got, got, to, got to get the tuition and stuff. I didn't say a word, just praying. I mean, he gave me the figure. I said, sir, I don't have any money. I said, but I want my children here. God told me to bring them here. Mm. And he says, well, I believe what you're saying. Let's talk with the teachers, see if they need any help. If they need some help, that'd be great. You will fit in perfectly here. Mm. He left us in the room, went to talk to the teachers. When he did that, came back out, said, Miss Bethia, we can use you. My teachers need some assistance, but there is no salary but your time, 
to take care of their tuition. Oh, oh. There you go. and then you can have uh, <laughs> any food that's left from lunch. You can take it home. Oh. And I said, thank you so much. And I was so excited. We prayed with him. And he told me where to take <clears> my kids and showed me the teacher I'd be teaching with. And then that evening after school, when I got home, my phone was ringing off the hook. The parents, a couple of parents called when we take, if I would take the children to school, they would buy me gas. Praise God. Mm. <clears throat> that was another way out. Mm. When I finished talking to four parents, they told that they was going to pay me per week, it was about 300 and something dollars a week. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I went to pick up uh, uh, the children the next morning for all of us to go to school, had a good time talking with the parents, spending the whole day in school with my children and their children, and making sure everybody had their, their, their breakfast, their lunch at the school. And do you know God worked such a miracle? One day I carried a young fella home by the name of Kevin Boyer. His mama became an alcoholic after driving the subways in New York. Mm. And she made her way to the front door and called me, come. Come, Miss Bethia, come inside a minute. So I told her the kids, stay in the car. Be right back, don't move. And I went inside. She said, here, take this key to my car. She had a brand new deuce and a quarter. Mm. Oh, Two twenty-five. Deuce rupees. and a quarter. That's right. She said, I want you to take, right. I want you to take this car <laughs> and take this trip, because your car gonna break down, it's smoking. I don't want you to have next to with the children. I said, thank you so much. I said, you sure? She said, yes. Yeah. I said, your husband says it's okay? She said, he don't care. Mm. Boy. <laughs> Lord help You're me Jesus. you cotton, right? <laughs> <laughs> when I, I, I dropped that car home in front of my door, no. my neighbors thought I had hit the number or something. <laughs> Where did get that car from? <laughs> Jesus. That's right. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> and God have carried me so far. And at the, when my husband passed, I didn't know which way I was going, although I've been in the church, but I was serving two masters. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Okay. When he died, I started dancing my problems away. Mm -hmm. oh. I'd get my children ready for church, get them ready for, for, for church on Friday afternoon, and when I got them in bed and tucked in, I would take off and go dance, go dance, mm -hmm. go dance. Mm -hmm. and get home about 3 o'clock in the morning and get a couple hours of rest and get up and get my children ready for Sabbath school. <laughs> One Sabbath morning, sitting up in the back with my children, Ella Goldburn was preaching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Alvin Goldburn. He looked up there in that back and then I was nodding. <laughs> and he yelled my name out before the congregation. Sister Bethia, wake up. You're going to miss the message. Oh. <laughs> that day sealed my life. Carried my children home, went into my cabinet. Let us all, we all picked out all the fortifiers, the most small record <laughs> tapes mm -hmm. and all that stuff yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're in our backyard on the Sabbath. Threw them all across the fence. Okay. I haven't bought another one since that day. Oh. Right. Oh. it out my life. Yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. And God have just kept, kept on blessing. It looked like you're going to, it's, it's going to, the bottom going to drop out, but God just picks it up. Yes. Thank and to put the, Put the, put the icing on in this when my Lord blessed this child to come out of high school and I had to take her to Oakwood. How am I supposed to do that, Lord? I got to stop even questioning him because he just kept doing everything. Mm -hmm. I packed my child up with a U-Haul, drove around those mountains in Tennessee at night by myself, got to Oakwood, patiently waited, when I got a chance to go into the principal's office, Dr. Rock, <laughs> mm -hmm. he and I talked for a while. And he said, you tell me, Mrs. B Sister Bethia, you drove all around those mountains of Tennessee by yourself with a U-Haul, with your child at night by yourself with only $200? <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> but God told me to bring her here. And I'm going to leave her here. Okay. <laughs> she said, back to Brooklyn, Little Rock, you're going to take her. <laughs> I'm not taking her back. All of her stuff is in the U-hole. I said, now, would you take her your business? Because I ain't going no place. I'm going to sit right here in this office. He said, you crazy. <laughs> but you got a lot of faith. 
-hmm. They come this far with 200. It's a thousand dollars. I said, is this God's school? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, bring her. Yeah. This is with yeah. We, 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 we've talked enough. Let me go and talk to the brethren. I say, have a good talk. <laughs> we'll be out here when you come out. <laughs> he came out. God is with you, sister. He's with you. I said, I know he told me to bring her. <laughs> I said, so let's pray now. There you so go. I grabbed the saint and he and I prayed. He said, you something else, sister, but there. <laughs> I said, who do I register my child? Mm -hmm. Register my child. Got in that uh, U-Haul, that old car, and started driving back to Brooklyn, just singing, giving God praise. Yes. Mm -hmm. He told me if I went back there within a quarter with some money, I had to come get her. I said, we better tell that to Jesus, because he got all the money. <laughs> there you go. Pray it again. Pray it again. <laughs> After we finished that, and I started back to, 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 to Brooklyn by myself, praising God for this child. God bless her to be there for the whole four years. Yes, okay. amen. Not on a dime. All amen. right. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. I know what God can do. That's right. And all of them came through church school on prayer. Yes. Yeah. God made a way every step of the in way. In spite. That, that's yes. amazing. It's in that, the book. Is so, that is such a great testimony. You ought to write a book. <laughs> you know, you have a book. God blessing you so much. That's right. Blessings of a single parent. Yes. I definitely want a book. I'm going to pay you for this one because I want this one. Right. I'll read it. I'm going to read this. I'm not a great reader of a lot of different things. I stick with the Bible, Spirit of Prophecy, and, and I get so much stuff coming in. But I'm going to read this one. These are yeah, I want every single parent to have testimonies. I really do. And God I hope that some of our church leaders and teachers and faculty are listening today because there are many people just like you yes. still need yes. that help and we need Jesus. to not turn anybody away you got when to they're coming to the church schools. We need to make a way for them got instead to. of being so expensive. Wow. We need to make them where people Absolutely. can afford them. Right. And for years here, we, we had our students at the school here, they said, if you can't afford tuition, don't pay it. And God has blessed on that. Yes, wow. yes. We've been going about 16, 17 yeah, years. Beautiful. So if they can pay $100 a month, that's fine. But those who can't pay it, no one's ever been turned away. Wonderful. Just for that reason. Yeah. Because exactly. I, like you, was raised yes. poor, didn't yeah. have anything. Exactly. And so I say, why is it, you know, it, it's Christian education. This should be for wow. everybody, not just wow. those. Because right. God Absolutely. says you train and them the way they should Absolutely. go. God has blessed them. You, you, they might stray away, but they're coming back. Yeah. It's within them. Now, you have instilled it when they were young. Yeah. That's right. And it's in them, and it's coming back. So my children act like, don't, you don't know Jesus? I say, Lord, she knows. Absolutely. She's yours now. All I can That's do is pray for her. I can't we, train we anymore. Got it. Go ahead. I was going to say that book has helped a lot of people in this ministry mm -hmm. when oh. we work with women because a lot of them are <clears> single <throat> from the projects. And But the thing about the book, and I'm not saying this because she's my mother. Yeah. I was with her on a lot of those journeys. You're not going to, that's, that's nothing but miracles. I mean, it's yeah. like it's out of this miracle. world, mm -hmm. crazy miracles. And so people are reading with their eyes open like, I know that can happen for me. Yeah. If that happened yeah. for her, I know it can happen Absolutely. for me. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we have to use that in ministry. What was really amazing is when I used to go to, like she said, go to nursing homes. And this particular Sabbath, we went to a nursing home, and this pretty woman sitting up in her bed. And I just grabbed her because she was so pretty. I said, you better come and go home with me. I was playing, you know. But she was serious. Mm. Uh -oh. She said, for real? I said, yeah, come on, go home with me. She said, OK. So I said, uh, I'll be back in your room in a few minutes. Let's have prayer with you. I'm going out and pray with some other women. And I come back by here. When I got back by her room, she had a doctor there. And she told the doctor that I was ready to take her home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I carried the woman home. She stayed with me for 10 years. Sure did. Mercy. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 10 That's years. Uh -huh. 10 years. Yeah. And that's the seed I'm talking about. 10 years. When I say she would take people home, yeah. she would feed people, <laughs> she would bring people <laughs> off Ministers the street. Too. I mean, yeah, she, she was always doing things like that along with prison ministry. So I think the journey, you know, had everything to do with yeah. the seeds planted, you know, way I, back I, I never saw myself in prison ministry or women's ministry. Mm -hmm. I was corporate America and I loved it. I was making over 80,000 a year. I was fine. I was content. Mm -hmm. But then I flipped the script. I you followed the voice. Mm -hmm. I listened to the Lord. <clears throat> uh, the figures are different, but the enrichment in my life cannot ever be 
as, as, as what I was making. Okay. You can't give me that joy or that peace. That's because right. when you find Christ, there's a peace that you have. And that's what the women need to know in the community, that it's, it's wonderful to have Christ in your life and to put him first because the peace that passes understanding will, will, will be obtained in your life. Mm -hmm. But you just have to give him a try, have faith. And that's what let, we try to do. Let me tell you how I know what Jesus will do if you just trust him. The 10 years the lady stayed with me, I decided to come back to Florida. And I asked her, I said, you want to go to Florida with me? She said, yeah, I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> so we packed up with my granddaughter and we started to Florida. I got on 65 South, I decided going back to my daddy's house, my mama's house, and my, my car started smoking. On 65, I was at um, one of the main exits where they had the, 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 um, the Three Rivers Hospital the up, on that, up on that area. And so boy says, turn off here, turn off here. When I turned off down there, I went to a shell station and a nice man was standing there waiting on me to pull up into that station. And he said, Miss, pop your hood, pop your hood. And I popped the hood. He said, you have a busted radiator. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to Florida. He said, but your grandmom in the car, you won't make it, you won't make it. He said, I tell you what you do, you go up on that hill to that station. They owe more than that long, they'll fix your car for you. And I ain't got no money to get no car fixed. Mm -hmm. But I did what he asked me to do, I went up there. You're not gonna believe when I went up there, parked my car. A tall, handsome black guy come up to my car, all dressed up, high and everything. He said, Miss, what's wrong? Pop your hood. There's two men telling me to pop my hood. I pop it again. <laughs> he said, yeah, you, you, you got a messed up radio. You can't go any place. He said, stay in your car. Then we're going to talk to the man. He went inside, stayed for about 20 minutes, came out with a paid receipt over $600 for my car. Mm. Say, listen, they're gonna fix your car for you. You're gonna have to stay overnight. So you come follow me, we're going to this hotel right over here. I'm gonna put you and your mama and your daughter up for the night. Aww. Said, early in the morning, I want you to come back over here, reach this receipt, get your car, and have a safe trip to Florida. I said, sir, I said, what's your name? He was a young pastor. Oh. Coming from a prison ministry conference. Oh, <laughs> look at that. He and I had a little church in the car. Oh, look at he that. And his, his, his partner came up more to know what was wrong, and he told him, he said, we got to take over to the hotel. They got to get some rest. The car won't be ready until in the morning. And they drove us over there. We got over there. Only Jesus would do something like this. When I got to the hotel, the man paid for our room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hotel and the mechanic was over $1,200. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I said to the man, How? I said, please give me your address. I said, I have to pay you back. He said, oh, no, no, no. He said, we had money left over from our conference. It's on this card. I don't stop to this station, mm. but I want to get some cold to drink so I could drive a little further. God stopped me here. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And your car attracted my attention. He said, so I had to do what I did. You don't owe us anything. I said, oh, Jesus? Mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. only Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we was writing for quite a while. <clears throat> then we lost connection. I don't know where he moved or what happened, but I mm -hmm. can never get a hold of him anymore. But see, mm -hmm. what you're saying, I know is such a great testimony for the women in this program yes. because they need to know that no That's matter where you are Absolutely. in life, God's got you. He got you. Tell, tell us more about the program. What, yeah. what kinds of things are you doing in this program? And and then, then how can we help? Right. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of viewers this is how help. how you can help, and, and this is what we're doing. Um, we have been blessed to partner with the University of Florida and, and Santa Fe College there in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, our office is there is in the Santa, uh, Santa Fe College office building. But we also have the ability to use their workshops and seminars in any of their conferences rooms mm. um, because we're an incubator company and 
this was a God-given thing that was given and placed in our, in our laps and we accepted it. And so we're able to do programs there free. We do a professional development program there for free. Everything we do is free to the women mm. in the community. So they're aware that we have this program. So when they come out of uh, the incarceration or if they're a single parent or a parent who hasn't been in school or haven't had employment in a long time, they take this program. And in this program, they, they get the computer skills, they get um, administrative skills, we dress for success. We give them the whole spiel about how to obtain a job and fill out a resume, be and totally equipped with that because you'll be surprised how many people just have lost the skills. Right. And so in this program, we've been blessed to have a young lady who was incarcerated, but when she came out, she didn't have anywhere to go. She didn't use any of her skills. She had two babies by a, a, a boyfriend and they were living with him and they were on food stamps. And she came to the program and there several other women uh, there. It's called the House of Hope, which is a, a, another place that helps women as well there in the city. What <clears> we <throat> did was we came together and we got this program going with the women and this young lady took the program and in a short story she a year and a half later came back after she graduated from the program and her dream job was to work for the city mm. and because of her resume and what we did in the program and what we taught her and one of the main topics I like to deal with is leadership and self-esteem I want to make sure that when they get everything they get that they also have empowered themselves to be self-sufficient from any independence emotionally on any other person mm -hmm. but God. Mm -hmm. So those two courses okay. are important for them to take. So they take those two courses, but in that course, a light bulb went off for her. She came back as the keynote speaker for last year's class mm -hmm. with her two children. Mm -hmm. She um, is in her dream job. She left her baby's daddies mm -hmm. uh, because he wasn't doing what she now saw herself doing in her life and she was going to church as well and she was moving into her new home mm. here's a homeless wow. person mm -hmm. from incarceration wow. to having children that other people were taking care of now she is independent self-sufficient and found god okay and Amen. to me that is all what we're about and, and whatever we can do and what our main goal is empowering, educating women, and also uplifting them. But we need a facility. We had a facility, but the facility that we had, the city, uh, the area that we were there did not want us to feed people. Well, that's a definite no for us because we have to. And how many people do you feed? Um, we, we have fed over 6,500 people in the last year or so wow. just with what we're doing. And uh, every quarter, because now we don't have a facility, God is still good. What we have to do, people in the community and in the church, we have to partner with mm -hmm. the community. We partner with the mayor, we partner with the commissioner, chief of police, we also partner with vendors, organizations. So every quarter now, and to me it's better than what we've been doing because we're feeding 600 families at least in a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. And we and, and this only came about uh, because I partnered with Bethel Seventy Adventist Church in Gainesville, mm -hmm. Florida. Uh, uh, the pastor is none other than Pastor Brent Walden. Uh, his wife, uh, Lady Jacqueline Walden, are a gift. Mm -hmm. They saw the vision. They saw what we were doing. They allowed us to use the parking lot. And then he decided, you know what, Smith? And this is Pastor Walden. We're going to make this a field day. Every quarter, we're going to close the church. We're going to come out here and we're going to take care of the community. Mm. And not only are we taking care of the community with food, we also partnered with the Elantra Health Department. So we do testing for HIV. We do blood pressure, diabetes. We have vendors that will give uh, free health care screening. We have vendors that also will give insurance information, making sure that the families in those areas that we're in, and they're very low area, that they have insurance for their families. Uh, we have uh, the choirs that are in the church, the groups that are participating, that are out there. We are making a difference. And we, I think we've been on television now three to four times this year already. And the front page, mm -hmm. a couple of times, mm -hmm. in regards to what the community is doing through Bethel Seventh day Adventist Church with women working with women. So the partnering is critical uh, because it, it reaches people that we cannot reach. And that's one of the things that we're real proud of and that we do. But we, we're not just feeding them, we're educating them, we're empowering them. We're going behind bars and making sure that when they come out, they come to us. Mm -hmm. Before we couldn't do that, but partnering with the city mm. and the government now allows the women that we give studies to, 
to ask for our organization to do their hours. What a blessing that is. Mm -hmm. And so now it's, it's a wonderful circle that happens for us. And so when they come out, churches, we've got to be ready for them so that they can have not just a place to worship, but a place that they can be accepted for who they are. Um, and I think that's where we're at now. Mm -hmm. and, and we're excited about that. And I think we have a clip. Um, you yeah absolutely you should have a clip we, this clip should demonstrate the community and the women that we've helped behind bars the women that are in, that are incarcerated doing their hours they are the team that help okay. us distribute the food so re if you look at registration and you look at the other areas you will see those women are actively involved and they love it Wonderful. and they're they're they, they just connected to it. Is this it? Tell us about what's yes. on that screen. This area is the Bethel 70 Adventist parking lot here. We have turned it into a huge flea market of, of services for the Alachua County in Gainesville, Florida. Mm. Here you're going to see how we have different tents of vendors that are going on here. The boxes, we get pallets of food. There's a company, a storage company, that uh, a U-Haul company that does the lifting for our food. Mm. Uh, they donate their time to us and give us that machine every quarter. They don't want a dime. Right. This truck is from FarmShare, who, again, we partnered with. Mm -hmm. FarmShare brings us our food uh, of no cost, and it's over, I believe it was 30,000 tons of food that day. Wow. And I'm saying when people left, they couldn't leave without assistance. So we have to get uh, Rikers uh, group. We got to get these boys club groups that are in the community to, un to unload their cars and, and load their cars uh, okay. because they have so much food. So it is, it is very um, positive and the community knows us better now and when they see us even when we go to Walmart we go to the store oh yeah women work with women you guys help those ladies that were that's what God wants us to do mm -hmm. is to share that yeah mm -hmm. and my dream is to not have to worry about going through the board of any church organization to feed people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I will call women work with women and say my family's out of food. I can say, come over. Yeah, we do Pick that. Yeah, we can need. do that. This yeah. what that's I'm a beautiful thing. For. So yeah. do you have a facility no. where you're, so that's one of your needs? Yes. yes. You what, need? the, the needs, and that you mentioned that to me, and the needs is the facility that will house us to be able to do what we do under one roof. Mm. Yeah. One side of the facility will be able to have our food distribution to where it doesn't matter what time you call, if a family's in need of food or a fire breaks out in a home and family loses their food or clothes, you can call Women Work With Women and we will have something ready for you and your family. Yes. Um, we want to be able to be a daily mm -hmm. blessing That's to right. people, That's not a quarterly blessing. Yes. Um, also on the other side of that facility, we want to have conference rooms, seminars, workshops, to where when the women come out of the incarceration, we want a transition facility mm -hmm. that will allow us to help women transition from drug addiction, transition from abuse, use, mm -hmm. transition from just making poor choices because of low self-esteem mm -hmm. and, and giving them the ability to have zero tolerance for the choices okay. that they make so they don't make future bad choices. Mm -hmm. But that all has to be developed in an environment and the environment is critical. It's hard for people to believe uh, in some things if the environment isn't set right. And that's why the facility is critical because we go and we pay and we go to different hotels and we have this, but God is telling us yeah. Mm -hmm. Have your facility. Sure. Do it right there. Mm -hmm. Be the head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not the head. Money. Not to mm -hmm. tell. You know what mm -hmm. we can do is we can ask the folk in that area. There may be people that's watching or you know people who has big facilities that's yes. not even being used right now that you'd be willing to donate. Are you Absolutely. a nonprofit? That's right. Nonprofit, nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. so if you need a tax write off, you have facilities, then we're going to put you in contact with these ladies. Or those of you that are watching, you say, well, I don't have that. I don't live in the area, but I can donate financially. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that this is a ministry of faith. Yeah, Going back for 50 some years ago with mom and God is blessed <laughs> and he's continued to bless. But see, yes, the blessing yes. of God is on the go. We Ooh, always right. say Amen. the blessing yes. of God is on the go. So when you're going, when you step forward in the That's water, right. God oh, will dear. part faith, that water. Faith, faith, faith. And then yeah. he supplies every That's need right. according to his riches and glory right. through Christ Jesus. So we don't need to give you all pep talks. We're going to start shouting. We don't need to give you all pep talks because you got a book here that's telling a, a bunch Absolutely. of these miracle yes. stories right yes, here. Yes, yes, and, yes. and so, but we want to encourage you and we want to encourage our folk at home. This is, just think of this as, as mama bringing the babies to the church school saying, I'm bringing my babies here. We're not leaving. Ooh, They're in Gainesville. Amen. 
They're saying, here we are. We got this baby. We're not leaving. God is going to bless it. We're going to feed these people. We're going to take oh, care yes. of these women. Yes. Yes. We're going to bring them out of darkness into marvelous light. Yes. We just need your help to do it. So yes. we're going to ask you to pray, and I'm going to ask Yvonne to pray right now. We're very serious. You pray and ask the Holy Spirit what He would have you to do. I don't care if it's $10 or $10,000. Whatever you do will be a blessing, and we know that this money is going to be put for the winning mm -hmm. of souls. This is evangelism Amen. at oh its best, goodness. literally That's at right. its it best. Is. That's it right. Is. Visit the fatherless, the, widow, the widows, the poor. Oh. All of these things that James talks about, that's what they're doing. We can get out and preach, and that's great. We can get a tent or a big building and preach, and that's all wonderful. But what about the people that says, you know what, I can't really hear what you're saying because I'm hungry. Mm, yes. I can't hear what you're saying because yes. my life is Oh, yes. preach. I'm yes. in prison. Oh, my prison. goodness. You That's have right. no idea what I'm going through. That's right. So I'm not going to turn on and listen to that. I want to yes. see Jesus. That's yes. right. And he sees wow. Jesus That's through right. this yes. ministry. Yes. So That's we're right. going to ask Yvonne right now. We're going to join hands together, and we're going to pray and ask that the Holy Spirit would impress you as to what to do. Yvonne and I are going to help, too. Yes, I, I can speak for her, I know, as well. Yes. We're going to help. We're going to ask you to say, Lord, what would you have me to do? It may be something more than you ever dreamed you would do. Mm. You're going to put God to the test. Try me and see that I will not open the windows of heaven yes. and pour you out blessings yes. where there's not room enough. You better yes. be yes. Yes. Pray for us, okay? Yes. Lord, we just thank you and praise you. Yes. Thank you, Lord God, for the vision and mission yes. that you've placed on these women's hearts, Lord, to serve you and to serve you as Jesus did, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you sent Jesus here to minister Ooh. to everyone. And you are sending mm. these women to minister in the communities, to give mm. them food and to turn their hearts to you. So we Jesus. thank you, Father. Jesus. And we pray for continued blessings. And we pray that you will work on the hearts of the viewers and, and impress them mm -hmm. to do something to be a part of this work. Lord, it is all of our responsibilities to share the wonderful gospel. So we thank you, we bless your name, and we pray for continued yeah. guidance for women working with women. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, go ahead. We have just a minute or so before I we just, have to take I a break. I want to just close it up real quickly with this one thing. When this started, we wanted this to look like what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And Jesus actually went out to people yeah. on foot mm -hmm. and just made sure he met their needs. But right. he fed them first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. He clothed them. He did whatever he needed yeah. to do to make sure their that their first. physical yes. needs were met. Mm -hmm. yes. That's where the love starts. That's where the relationship building starts. Mm -hmm. And when we try to grow from there. Yes. So we really appreciate just knowing that God's plan is what our plan is supposed to follow. And, and our goal has always been to have a facility after my best friend Binky place. And mm. that's what it will be called because she was my best friend. And Binky she was, is. Oh, Binky yeah. My sister. the Holy Spirit and she Binky. My sister who oh, passed away is her in sister. 2009. Yes. And she loved you and you loved her. Absolutely. Binky and I were like peanut butter and jelly. And, <laughs> and even as we later went on in life, we know that this is a divine thing that has to happen because mm. she believed it. And in spite of what she went through, look at God. Won't he do it? Yes. Won't he do it? <laughs> he do it. And so Binky's place is going to happen, and we know it's going to happen because we're doing everything God has called us to do, and being here is no accident. He we, the Lord. We, we need to put up the address roll. We want to yes. make sure we have time before the program is over. So this is the role. This is how you'll contact with your support and your, your gifts. If you would like to find out more about women working with women, and the many professional and personal development programs they offer, please visit their website, womenworkingwithwomen.org. There you will find information on their seminars on domestic violence, prison ministry, parenting, Bible study, and many other topics. Their website again is womenworkingwithwomen.org or call them at area code 352-871-5223. Their address is Women Working with Women, 530 West University Avenue, Gainesville, Florida, 32601. Can't believe that our time is all gone for today, but when you send a donation to this ministry, they're going to send you one of these books. So we're going to ask you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit what He would have you to do, 
in support of Binky's place. That's we're, right. We're saying it by faith. Amen. Yes, Amen. The time is all gone for today. Until we see you next time, may the Lord richly bless you abundantly more than you could ever ask or think.